the three. We're back again for another live streaming of Foo Ventures. And here today, we are going to be learning all about black vultures with an inside view yeah. of our two vultures to see where they are. So um, remember to say hello, tell us who you are, where you are. Um, say hello, ask questions. Questions are really awesome. Yeah, we, we want to know what you're curious about. We want to know what you think um, about these animals. There's a lot of public perception about vultures as them being a nuisance or a horrible pest or a, a bringer of death. And so we want to kind of squash some of those, but we also want to know what you feel about them because we really love them here at Oakland. They love my pants, too. Yeah, they like to tear um, on fringes of pants. Okay, so let's introduce our, our players here. Who we yeah. have? Now the wings aren't right. That's Van Gogh. Okay, so this is our, our female, I believe, Van Gogh. And, yep, um, yep she's got an amputation on her left wing. And Vinny is our other um, possibly male, possibly female. Uh, we don't know quite yet because they do lay eggs, but they're not fertile. So there's just a lot of mystery around that, right, mystery? Yeah, and there's um, <laughs> a lot of mystery because you can't really tell because usually you can tell by the different size, maybe, um, of the different birds, but because these are very social birds and they are ground nesting and they don't really have to hunt their food very aggressively, they actually don't have as much sexual dimorphism, which means okay, difference in size between the male and the female, or the female and the male, depending on the species. Yeah. Hi, Pam. Hi, Abby. Thanks for joining us today. It's great to see you. Um, Mr. E's giving them some, some fun things to, to, to play with. What did you give them, Mr. E? Yeah, so this is some enrichment. We have some balls that have holes in them that are then stuffed with different things. So this one here has some toilet paper with some fish oil in there. Um, different scents, different smells for them to get excited about. There's also some with fur mixed in. There's some that have little pinky surprises in there for them. So these are our hard plastic, our hard rubber balls that are, are um, uh, just basically um, allowing them to simulate a carcass of an animal. Oh, yeah. you know what? I learned something super cool. So the word vulture comes from Latin valeri. Ooh. Valeri, which means to tear or bolt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And rapere is Latin for raptor, rapere, to grab or seize. So these are rapere valeri. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, I know. I love it. So yeah, they're tearing into these balls, and that would be how they would consume their prey. They would find a carcass of an animal, and they would tear into it. A lot of people think they're strictly carrion eaters. They will eat larger food as well. Um, they will eat even small animals that they will capture. So they're not just simply eating dead things always. They will capture invertebrates and small vertebrates as well. So they're pretty adept at capturing things on the ground, and they're very fast at um, seen one run they're very fast runners yeah so i just heard one of the vultures say hi Maisie. did you can you believe that they went, buh, 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 Maisie. Buh, hi Maisie. Buh. they know you're watching they're happy that you're here just like we're happy that you're here too so um and hi sunny thanks for joining us again today everybody you guys are awesome uh for being such true to our our uh food venture yeah, and they're really, really getting after with their beaks. Oh. Their beaks are very sensitive, and they use them to tear into their prey, like we said before. There's They've got a one. little bit of a pinky in there, so they're kind of fighting over that pinky, which is just a baby mouth. Um, and that's a, a good prey item for them. Um, they might be a little frozen still, too, so that's another enrichment. They have to kind of chew it up, um, get it so that they can swallow it whole. They're using that mouth, which uh, our beak, which in the animal world we like to refer to as their melon baller. <laughs> They're melon baller, meaning that they'll take scoops out of things. Yeah, so they are they are considered raptors, but they have a lot of um, deficiencies that other raptors mm -hmm. have. Like, look at the toes on their feet. I don't know if you yeah. can get a good zoom in on that. Their toes are long and not as nimble for ripping, tearing, um, not their forks, for sure. Yeah. So they're missing kind of the raptor, the raptor toes mm -hmm. um, and their beak is not as sharp and curved like Mr. E said more of a, a melon baller than yeah. a, than a um, pull apart rip and grab and seize so um, Mr. E you made a funny joke in the beginning before the, we started the adventure you talked about oh, yeah. <laughs> <Is that laughs> they begin what did you say they begin at the end yeah 
Yeah, they begin at the end. They start with door number two. They start with door number two usually because yeah. they have to get into the animal that's been killed. Yeah. And so. sometimes it's not been like broken open or ripped open, so yeah. they go in. There's eye and nose. And other holes. And other holes. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, Hop, thanks for uh, for uh, tuning in. And you know what? Also, like if you think about vultures, you might get a vision of like the African savanna and the lion with all the vultures gathering around them. So vultures often will follow a predator around because the predator opens the prey for them because they can't. They have that deficiency. Talking about their beaks and their feet. Yeah, their bottom beak is kind of like their little pry bar, and their top beak kind of like a scoop, and they use that that way. Whereas uh, uh, another bird of prey might use their beak as a grabbing and tearing. They don't do as much tearing. Um, they do kind of scooping. Yeah. So um, let's see. Give me a give me a heart if you see vultures circling in the air. Oh yeah. Give me a yeah. give me a heart. And I want to uh, help you identify what they are by looking at them in flight. So, but first of all, I'm gonna teach you some words. Mystery and I are teaching some words. What? When you are uh, in a circle, going around and around in the air, they call that a kettle. Mm -hmm. A kettle. K e t t l e. And the kettle is riding a thermal. Mm -hmm. Another word, a thermal. That's the warm air rising up. So they try not to flap as much as possible. Now you're gonna watch, and in that kettle of birds circling around the thermal, you want to look for how their wings are in their mm -hmm. in their shapes. Yeah. Tell them what a dihedral is. So a dihedral is a very V shape or a kind of a, a, a crescent shape, Ooh. if you want to say it that way. And that's going to be wings up, wingtips up, above where the line of the head is or the line of the shoulders are. So up above. And they teeter-totter like and they will, Yeah, and they'll, they'll fluctuate kind of within that thermal to raise their body or lower their body in the air column um, if they want to move towards a prey item that they see on the ground. Yeah, but you have to look closely because thermal, thermals will also have other birds like woodworks and even pelicans. Mm -hmm. So um, here's, here's the deal, and osprey too. So vultures for me, B for vulture, yep. eagles, straight flat out, they have really broad, wide wings, and then um, pelicans, curve, like a P, they go a P as a curve in it, and ospreys have elbows in their surf when they're um, thermaling or riding or what uh, air mass. So B for vulture, flag for eagles. Big stop. Okay. We're done. We're back. Oh, whoop, whoop. Are so we working? We're good. All right. Sorry, we, we thought we're having technical difficulties. Um, our, our vulture was telling us. So we have two types of vultures here in um, North America. It, well, in the southeast, actually, I should say, we have the black vulture, which are these. Yeah. What is the scientific name of the tree? Corrigus acratus. Corrigus acratus. Acratus. And they have also Cathartus aura, which is the turkey Cathartus vulture. Aura. Michelle, look behind me. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Owl didn't even know it was out there. <laughs> um, okay, so are they a keystone species, Greg wants to know? Oh, I, I don't actually know that. They, I would feel like that they are a, a very important species, but I don't know if any other species relies on them. Um, we probably rely on them for, for trash pickup, and we rely on them for um, disease reduction, but we don't really rely on them for habitat or for um, basically any shelter. So not really a... Um, a keystone species, but definitely a species that needs protection. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, these guys um, are kind of a vulture in two ways. So they're, they're a vulture in that they eat dead things, but they're a vulture also in that they kind of steal um, or, or kind of pull away from resources from another of our vulture species, our turkey vulture, which we had mentioned before. So turkey vultures have really good smell. They find the prey, and then the black vultures come in in a big group, kick the turkey vultures off, and, eat, and eat the prey item or the, the Miss, carcass. Let's tell a mystery how you can tell the difference between a turkey and a black vulture. A turkey vulture. A turkey vulture. Because Sorry, the I say easy. turkey, but I meant turkey vulture. Because <laughs> I say turkeys and black. Yeah. yeah. So turkey vulture um, has what color head? Does anybody know out there? Type your answer in. What are you doing? You like my feet? Not, not black like It's this. not this color. So if you know the color, type in your answer real quick. It's three letters. <laughs> you can do it. 
Um, but in flight, the way you tell is the black vulture has white patches on the underside of their wings and at the very tips of the wings. And that's really easy to tell because you're looking up. And turkey vultures will make even a more distinct dihedral than a, than a black vulture. Melissa wants to know what's in the blue ball. I don't know. Mystery there's today. fur um, in there. So the, there's packed fur in there. And then there's a tube inside of there which has um, some pinkies in there, some little baby mice in there. Um, and those are question. items that they're going to try to find. It's like a puzzle for them, a little enrichment puzzle. They're using the their mouth to try to open that up to get inside. What Armis, you doing? Armis Michelle, shoe and pants. Yeah, don't put that mouse part on my feet, please. Okay. Yes, Kirsten, you got it. Red head is the turkey vulture. You got yeah. it. And turkey vultures have this really amazing face. If you've ever um, got the chance to look at their face up close, they have this amazing nares. Oh, Ooh, nares. And nares is a really cool word for a, a nostril or a nose hole. And nares in a bird are very pronounced if you are able to smell, which very few birds are able to do. But yeah. turkey vulture is probably one of the ones that can smell the best of any bird in the whole entire world. And they can smell because they have these amazingly large nares that they use to smell for that rising up stink that comes off those dead carcasses. Ah. Oh. What is oh. he doing? Oh, he's oh. getting off his beak. What do they call yeah. it? Beaking? That's called beaking. Beaking. And feking is um, a way to clean your beak. You can see he's got a little bit of fur stuck on there. So feking cleans, it also sharpens the beak um, by rubbing the edge, the leading edge of the beak down so that it's, when it compresses its mouth closed, it creates a good bite gap, which is really important for them. If they get bad alignments of their beak, it can be really dangerous for them. Eat, so feking a bite to be perfectly um, symmetrical on both sides. All right. You can tell these guys are characters. There's a lot of intelligence, a lot of curiosity yeah. in this bird. Um, they're they're always playing with toys. They're always interested in something different and something new. Mm -hmm. um, so they're kind of fun animals to have in our exhibit to yeah. have for you to see. So yeah, the next time you come by, check them out and watch what they're doing. See what they're doing. Yeah, they're very social animals. They they like to be in big groups. Um, they have hierarchies within their their grouping and one animal will feed first, so you can think about a pride of lions, kind of the way that that feeding happens is very similar in vultures, except for they're a matriarchy, so the females are kind of in charge. All we, right. We're going to have to talk about their legs, Michelle. Yeah, they have some really pale legs, don't they? <laughs> some ashy skin. They need to have some lotion. Um, so um, they cool themselves in a really peculiar way. They defecate on their legs. Yeah. You know what that word means? Defecate? Maisie? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's you probably do so that is uh, just a way to cool their legs down believe it or not Faustina their beaks remind me of needle nose pliers yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, that's a good really it's good a comparison good adaptation yep yeah and they've got that little hook on the <laughs> end for for grabbing and flying into those tight little spaces the the ones that I, I think of a really being cool adaptation is they'll use that to actually pull the meat off in between the ribs of a carcass. So super cool adaptation. Hi Lucy. Hi Bella. Thanks for being with us again. Love it. Alright, so um, this animal is... Oh, we, did, we, we got what? Wait. We didn't say the big word about death. Oh, but, what does it mean? But evaporative cooling is our other big word. Words today. Yeah. Evaporative so, cooling. So evaporative cooling. And while is, we're at it, her alpha pose. Yeah. When you get wet <laughs> and as you're drying off, that's going to cool the body down. So that's why they defecate on their legs, and that's why their legs are white from their slice or their mute. Mute. The bathroom behavior. What they do when they go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, we're using all kinds of biology words today, a lot of big words. So boys and girls out there, I want you to know that if you like science, you're also gonna learn, you gotta learn language. So mm -hmm. learn Latin, learn Greek, learn your roots, because if you do, it'll help you a lot yeah. in, in science. Chris wants to say her mom has a group that visits and one tapped on the front door. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's pretty awesome. Yeah, they're very wow. interesting and they, they've kind of- Sounds like a terrible a, way to come down. Yep, they kind, of, kind of adapted to humans being around, right? Yeah. Um, they, they're really, really interesting birds. We didn't have as many of, of them specifically, black vultures, 
until humans started moving in and changing the environment. We made these big fields, we made open areas, and then we started hitting a lot of animals on roads, right? Cars, yeah. So a lot of our vultures that we have in captivity, especially in places like Oatland, have damage to them from injuries with cars, from car strikes, and that's where um, Van Gogh's wing amputation happened from, and why we have Vinny as well, because of a car strike. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I just have to, I'm having like funny jokes running through my head and thinking about the vulture tapping on the door. Oh, yeah. He's probably saying, bring us your dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little Monty Python to those Monty, fans out there. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so they're carrion feeders. We talked about that. Um, what's their favorite treat? Ooh. Carrion. Yeah. Dead. Anything dead. I don't know what's the favorite. Yeah, so they're they're not really big on smells. They're more big on um, things that tear into you. So tearing into a, a bigger carcass would be a fun thing for them to do. Um, they get rats as a regular part of their diet, and then doing something like this where they're tearing into and then getting a small treat like a pinky or fuzzy that doesn't have a lot of bones that they can just kind of chew up and swallow whole. That's good for them as well. <laughs> that scared them. Um, they like your shoelaces too. They like to come in and untie your shoes, yeah. pull on your shoes, your pant leg. Yes. Not gonna hurt you. They're just uh, curious. It looks like an, uh, a worm or something possibly. Today. Bald eagles are getting jealous. Yeah, they are. Um, bald eagles will actually steal from vultures too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and juvenile them. bald eagles will actually get mistaken for black vultures a lot because they look very similar, um, and they'll feed in very similar ways. Uh, black vultures and juvenile bald eagles will actually feed mm. on the same carcasses and kind of blend in with each other. So, if you see a group of black vultures, look really closely. There might be a, a bald eagle in there. Yes, absolutely. Oh, there we go. That's a pretty cool, cool view you which have there, is, friends. Which is male or female? Uh, which is male? Melissa, we are 100% not sure. Yeah. Um, we know that there one, there's a female in there, yeah. and there could be two females in there yeah. because we don't see them laying eggs. We just see that they have laid eggs. The eggs are never um, fertile, so we don't know if it's um, if there's a male female action going on. So yeah, we don't know 100. We could we could do some discovery, but you know it's it's a little intrusive. Yeah, so it's a bit invasive. We don't do that. Yeah, let's stay, stay hands off as much as we can. And usually in raptors, you get a dimorphism. You get a male bigger, a female bigger than a male. Um, but the slower I read, the slower the prey items. The less dimorphism. What did you you read something? Similar? Yeah, and, and typically in, in social animals, um, animals that have like hierarchies like this, females don't need to be any bigger. Um, the male's going to leave them alone, so um, they kind of lose that um, dimorphism unless you're a mammal. In birds, it's different than mammals. Yeah. So um, yeah, they're eating some pretty putrid stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So they actually have been known to um, consume botulism toxin, the botulin uh, Clostridium botulinum, and it doesn't affect them at all. So they have um, adapt adaptations to eating putrefied food, which is pretty pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. That yeah, we cannot they're not, do. They're not really affected um, by anything because they have this really strong stomach flora, and they can break down all those really horrible, horrible diseases, which can last without oxygen, last without um, a food source for long periods of time. They can't last in their tummy, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, Maisie wants to know where these vultures hurt, and that's why they're at Oatland. Yes, yeah. that is true, Maisie. Um, Van Gogh has an amputation, a wing that's amputated, ampute, amputated, amputated. and um, Vinny has also wing Im injury, but I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, it's more of a, a more of a shoulder injury. You can see that the wing is never held up. Um, it's not a, um, a movable flight wing. It can be stretched out. They will do that um, pose that we were talking about. Peraltic pose. Peraltic pose, pose to drive. I've seen that where they like hold their wings up. Like, an, like do a cormorant or in, in hinga. Yeah, that's a maybe possibly to de-pest um, their bodies. Yeah. What do you call that? Not de-pest. That's the wrong word. Louse. No. Um, Parasitized, Ser deparasite. Sterilized. <laughs> <laughs> These are not sterilized animals. No. <laughs> Is that Jonathan Jackson? JJ. JJ used to hang out with these guys. He knows what we're talking about, about going after your shoes and your pant leg. Um, 
But yeah, they're pretty awesome animals. And so for them to get a bad rap, the pair in our um, world, we have to fix, we have to fix that. Fix yeah. the, um, the ecosystem services they give us is far better than any harm they would ever do to you. Um, people don't like them when they like colonize outside their trees, maybe because they defecate and yeah. I don't know. But oh, you can see the the nictating membrane coming across right now on the head. His head in that's super super cool. Oh yeah, because if you're putting your head in guts and gore, you're gonna have that eyelid closed. Yeah, those goggles. Yeah. yeah hi. Hello. Just carrying something. This is really strength. Wild. Um, also allows them to get a, a good smell, get a good taste of what's in there. Yeah, so vultures um, are super cool because they don't have a voice box. No. And um, so they, any sounds they make are coming out of their gut. Like the, <laughs> like an exhalation, like a hiss or a bark yeah, or a... Just on cue. Yeah. So um, you won't hear v vultures singing to each other, just yeah. doing that. And I don't know why they don't have a vo voice box. It's probably like a reason why evolutionarily they don't. Probably. Probably they just need the space for just swallowing big chunks of food. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, do their beaks itch? Uh, <laughs> I think uh, more than their beaks itching, there's um, probably a little bit of fur bothering their, their nostrils at the top, their, what, their nares at the top of their beak. So um, they do have the ability to smell a little bit, but that is more for respiration. So um, because they need it for respiration, if it's getting tickled up there, they want to get that away. And that's why they're seeking or kicking with their feet at their face um, to get that air away. Yeah. Remember, it's important to remember though, like you can't sterilize this environment super that much, like you can't take away all of the ability of them to, you know, replicate what they would do in the wild. So hair is a very normal thing for them to deal with, so they're not in any danger of having hair. Um, this one actually has some snake skin in it. I thought that they would open it up, but I might have to give them some help. Yeah, they can work for it. So um, their hair, they, they are featherless on their heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, somebody noticed that, and that's a really good adaptation. Yeah. Um, do you guys know why? Give us your give us your best answers. And and the important thing to remember is that all birds um, ha feathers. have feathers um, at, around their face, and these guys have feathers as well around their face. They're just not as feathered as other birds might be, and so those feathers have gotten smaller and more bristle-like, like, like hairs. Yeah, they're modified. So they look like hairs, but they're not. They're actually feathers. Yeah, so they actually do have feathers all over their head, just not the same feathers that they have over their bodies. Correct. Yeah. Um, no contour And so, feathers. does anyone out there have a venture, um, food venture, of why? A food venture? <laughs> a a venture. A venture, yeah, I, I like venture it. to find out? Can you venture? Yeah, that's nice. Good, good, good yeah. play on words there. Yeah, so, um, that's so funny. We'll give you the oh. answer, we're just giving you a chance. Faustina, can vultures sweat? Um, What's really interesting is birds don't sweat. Nope. Um, so they're very good at insulating their body. And because they're super, super good at insulating their body, um, they're not always good at cooling their body down quickly. So they can overheat really, really easily. And to cope with this, rather than sweating, they actually pant. And so what they'll do in a really hot um, circumstance, if they're um, stuck somewhere where it's really hot, They'll open their mouth up very wide, and they'll pull air in over their mouth, and they'll get that evaporative cooling, just like a dog or, or a cat will pant if they're really hot. Um, birds do the same thing. And vultures um, do it quite a bit. They're pretty pretty good at keeping cool using that evaporative cooling on their legs. They vi they'll visit water if they need to. They'll find shade. But being a blackbird, you can imagine they do get hot sometimes. Yeah, Kirsten says because of how they eat, yeah. Because they're putting their head inside of a, a carcass. Yeah. And you're going to put the feathers, the, I mean the feathers, the meat, the blood, the tissue, all that all over your face and your eyes. It's just another way to help keep them a little bit more sand, like cleaner mm -hmm. for the next round. So then they go hunting. More so for the turkey vulture who has a keen sense of smell. Mm -hmm. um, they need to have that clean, that cleansed head, clean head. You mm -hmm. can't speak today. Words is not my friend. Um, <laughs> but so this 
remind you guys, if you probably remember this, but the black vultures do not really have a good sense of smell. Mm -hmm. They visually hunt. So they're going to look for a kettle, and if there's a kettle, they'll look for a turkey vulture in the kettle, and they'll follow the turkey vulture, because the turkey vulture they know can smell a carcass. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of times they'll, they'll have a separate kettle of black vultures above the turkey vultures, and they'll just stay high up, and they'll be watching below to yeah. see what the turkey vultures do. Yeah, so we're kind of answering that question right now, how they see things from high up. Yeah. Um, they, they do have good vision. They mm -hmm. can... Um, they can follow, they'll follow other birds. They can see something dead. They'll come down and investigate it. Mm -hmm. um, they're very social, so I imagine they would tell each other mm -hmm. if they found a good find. Yeah, there's an interesting uh, UGA study um, about these guys, and they place carcasses out um, anywhere from rat size all the way up to parochial deer. And they, what they found was that 80% of the time, the turkey vultures found the prey first, and then the black vultures came in after it. So yeah. they're very much, most of the time, going to be following those turkey vultures, having that kind of symbiotic relationship or uh, symbiosis. And, and man, that turkey vulture is so good at detecting the merc captains, that oh, the, yeah. the smells that As come off of bacteria. up um, on those thermals. Yeah, they actually, this is my favorite fun fact about vultures. Turkey vultures help utility companies mm -hmm. find gas leaks. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you guys know this out there, you adults probably do, but our natural gas, eagles, calm down, our natural gas that we cook with doesn't have scent. We put scent in it so that we know if we have a gas leak or we know we have a stove on, we walk in and we don't blow ourselves up. Well, if there's a leaky pipe out in nature, they sometimes don't know where it is, but they will know if there's turkey vultures circling around over some unknown object that they don't find, they'll detect, they'll find it first. So the vultures are used in the utility industry, yeah. gas it's, companies. Yeah, it's super interesting too. You'll, you'll see these turkey vultures and they'll form a kettle and there'll be no, no carcass underneath and they'll be like, oh, better go investigate. Yeah. You know, what's going on? So they've saved the day. Another ecosystem service. Yeah, and they're, they're very interesting too in that like the turkey vultures can smell, you know, very well, um, but they're also just going to be, you know, reserved and keeping energy as much as they can. So they're going to do that kettling quite a bit. So just because you see a kettle of individuals doesn't mean that there's a dead animal nearby because they can smell from miles away and thousands of feet up an individual prey item. I got a good word for you. What? You know, the words are my friends. Word. What do you call, it's not a joke, it's true. What do you call a group of vultures? Oh. A, word, a couple words, actually. Oh. So, crows, a group of crows is a, a murder. murder. And a group of owls is a parliament. So, a group of vultures. Hmm. What Think about vultures when you go to a burial, what do you go to Ooh. when you have a viewing? Oh, that's interesting. Does anybody know what it is? They do. It's kind of a cool word. They call it a wake of vultures. A wake. That's kind a of crazy. Wake. <laughs> well, there's other words too, but that one was my favorite. A wake. Yeah. What was the other one? There was another word. And, it, and I'm, sh I'm sure that you guys are probably all aware that, you know, there is much, much, much to do about vultures in our culture and in many different cultures. And a lot of cultures view them as you know, Undertakers, or if you've ever seen uh, the animated Robin Hood, uh, you might think of them that way. That's how I've kind of, I remember vultures um, in my childhood, um, because they weren't in the Midwest until recently. So that's kind of crazy to think about um, black vultures being up there now. But about is that other cultures kind of respect them in very interesting ways. So other cultures use vultures as a conduit to some better place. So to an afterlife. So they're very interesting um, kind of bringers of death in some cultures, but also bringers of new life in others, which is really, really cool how we view them. Yeah, I like the whole idea of an aerial burial. Yeah. The aerial burials. Yeah, they're pretty crazy. Go in, get put into a vulture first, afterlife. Yeah. I love it. It's, Sign me up. Yeah, get, you can get dispersed by a vulture, which is pretty great. Yeah. Yeah, so we have um, two two well-known or well-spotted, easy to see vultures. And if you go out west, they have a, a oh. cousin. 